Welcome back to Encouraging Things. Today we're going to be painting a death whistle from Ghostbusters Afterlife. This is one of Adam Savage's original props. If you check out the upper right hand corner you can find a link to the video he posted on making these props prior to the movie's release. This version of that prop is available on Thingiverse for free. It was made by Fair451. One thing about my particular print is during the print cycle it did in fact have a failure. That failure was in the form of a support collapse which actually closed up one end of this prop as this prop was designed to be functional as a whistle. With that collapse, although we can clear out the debris, it does make it non-functional. Not that I'd really want to put my mouth out in any way as it's not food grade resin, it's just normal water washable resin. So losing functionality of the whistle was not very important for me. However, that does bring up problems later on, which you'll see. Now once I cleared out the debris and sanded around the edges in order to make it nice and clear, the next thing I needed to do was paint it. As usual, I started out with my latex water washable gesso, which did not want to come out of my airbrush very well. However, somewhere between that layer and the layer of tan that I put on it, I was able to figure out my airbrush a little bit better, and the paint itself came out excellent. It was at this point that I discovered an issue with this particular print. As the print was made as a whistle that would function, it does have a ball inside of it. This ball is hollow. And if you've ever printed anything in resin, you know that if you have any pockets, resin can get trapped inside. So for this particular print, unfortunately, it began leaking resin even after it was cured. So as a word of caution, if you ever download a free 3D printable item and you're going to print it in resin, just make sure that it's something that doesn't have pockets in it. Whether you need to find a different version or edit it yourself, it's always good to make sure that you don't leave any spaces that resin can get caught and then leak out later. Once the initial paint was completed, I wanted to make sure that all these inset areas were painted with a black paint. On the original model, Adam did use an airbrush and specifically stated overspray wasn't an issue. However, I got a little bit paranoid and decided to do it by hand instead. This caused a little bit of an issue later when I was weathering as the hard edges of the brush strokes were easily visible through the weathering pattern. One of the things that really concerns me when I'm making a build is making a mistake that I can't recover from. In this case, while I was weathering and trying to draw a darker edge underneath the, the edge of the crown, I spread black paint much thicker across one of the pieces than I had meant to. Rather than panicking and repainting the entire thing and starting over again, I decided to lean into it and immediately started just brushing the paint around the body. Since I don't have any oil paints, I was going to use watered down acrylic paint anyway, as that's my go-to. And so it really didn't make much of a difference whether it was thicker now or thicker later. So by applying additional wash across the body, I was able to even out my mistake and get the weathering effect that I was looking for. One important thing while working with acrylic paints is that they are water washable. This means that even after they've dried, if you don't seal them, you can in fact damage them by adding additional water or water-based paint. As I'm currently unable to seal my prints between layers, I have to be very cautious while adding the next layer of weathering. Even though it's dry, I can in fact tear the paint away, which is what happened near the top of the crown. And as you can see, the tear did go all the way down through the latex and expose the resin. Without the base coat, it's extremely difficult to get paint to resettle in this position, and you have to go over it several times, even with thick paint, in order to make it look correct. Once the dark wash was applied, I did want to go back over the model with a dry brush in order to bring out the areas where one might touch the object or rub the object, which would take some of that dirt away. So I went over the cheeks, the nose, a few of the teeth, as well as the top where you would hold it with your hand in order for it to look more realistic and more worn down. The last thing I wanted to do to the model was add a little bit of dust. Adam used diatomaceous earth, which works really, really well. But without that, 
I just used what was left of my chalk dust that I'd created previously for my Stormtrooper helmet. And while I do that in the background, I'd like to go ahead and thank my patrons for their continued support of the channel. Of course, supporting the channel comes in many different forms. Watching the video is always a great way to do it. If you like what you see, pressing the like button. If you'd like to see more, subscribing. And if you'd like to be notified when more comes up, pressing the bell is always a good sign. And of course, if you'd like to go above and beyond for as little as $1 a month, you too can help support the channel monetarily. For as little as $1 every 30 days, you can gain access to sneak previews of upcoming videos, behind the scenes footage, and other features to be named as my patron list grows. The larger the channel gets and the more I'm able to provide, the more I'll be able to provide my patrons and my viewers with all the things they want to see in here. And regardless of what way you decide to support the channel, I do appreciate each and every click, every bump, comment, mention, and dollar. Thank you. So how did it turn out? But whenever I'm making a copy of a prop of any kind, I'm not trying to make it perfect. At this time, my main concern is learning how to perform these actions. How to make a prop, how to weather it, how to add greeblies, how to paint. My skill level in these areas is extremely low. But as I progress, I will extend and try harder and do more and try to get it closer to an actual on-screen prop. A one-for-one, one, as it were. At this time, I'm okay with leaving flaws in the print and other things like that. Simply because creating something and finishing something is more important than finishing it perfectly. I will say, in situations where resin prints fail, or where I don't have the materials to exactly match the way something was created, I'm given an opportunity to find new and different ways to come to the same conclusion, as it were, or to solve the problem. And in some ways, that makes it a lot more fun than just following the trail of someone who came before you. And as with all of the projects that I bring forth to the channel, I'd like to encourage each and every one of you to give it a shot. Whether you have a filament printer or a resin printer, there are thousands of free prints out there that you can download, print, paint, sculpt, add things to. And whether you follow the ways that somebody else did it before you, or whether you find your own way, each time you do one of these projects, you'll get a little bit better, get a little bit faster, and feel a little bit more confident in your skills. So as always, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.